who don't know me or if you've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel. I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great weekend. I know mine was super busy as always. Uh, my husband and I did manage to get out on a chunk run on Sunday though. That was fun. We hit quite a few uh, stores and we also got to go to the little estate sale down the road. And I have quite a good haul for you. And that video will be coming up on Friday. So please join me for that. For today's video, I, I worked on six little projects for you. And uh, I had a heck of a time, honestly. I don't know what the deal was. I think it was the time change is what I'm blaming it on. But I was having a real issue last week with my creativity and my motivation. <laughs> so uh, luckily I was able to kind of hammer down on Saturday and got some things done and then came in this morning really worked hard to get everything finished and it's all done and in the video you're going to see in a minute so i hope you enjoy the video and if you do please remember to give it a thumbs up i always appreciate that and if you like what you see and you want to see more um please join me just hit the subscribe button and uh the little notification bell that way you don't miss anything and you'll see all of my crazy stuff i've got going on here at the cottage in my kitchen so um, I also wanted to mention all of the DIY products that I'm using today are available here in the shop and also on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. So anyway, without further ado, here are the six projects that I got done for you. Project two is another super simple makeover. I've had these two cages sitting around for a bit. One of them came filled with potpourri and they both open from the bottom. I wasn't really sure what exactly I was going to do with them. I just knew I didn't want to paint them because I liked the kind of rustic feel to both of them and that one that has the green color I really love. So I had some nests that I had bought at Hobby Lobby and I had some Spanish moss that I've had forever and I had these colored eggs that have been sitting around for probably a year now so I decided you know these would make really cute little Easter displays with those nests and some Spanish moss so all I did was take the Spanish moss form it around the base of the nests put three of the little colored eggs in each one and then close them back up this was a super easy, simple uh, makeover, but I love how these will look for Easter and you could always change out the eggs for a plant or something else later on down the road. Project three, I bought this little wooden table a little while ago and uh, I knew I wanted to give it a makeover, but I had to start by tightening its little legs because all of them were wobbly. Once I got that done, I gave it a really good bath with some crud cutter followed with some clean water and I cleaned it uh, both sides, top and bottom and got it all ready to paint. And on this, I had already decided what I wanted to do with the legs. So um, I knew that I wanted a base coat of white on the legs, but I went ahead and went with white all over the entire piece. So here I am giving it its first coat of DIY's White Swan, and I did follow this up with a second coat. 
Once the second coat of paint was all dry, I took it outside and just gave it a good hand sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. I didn't really want to overly distress this piece, but I did want to bring out a little bit of that wood on some of the corners just to give it a little more character. Once that was done, I measured my legs and I had already decided I wanted to put decoupage paper on the legs. So I am cutting out four strips of uh, the neutral florals decoupage paper by redesign by Prima, just wide enough to go over the each side of the legs just a little bit. Then I begin putting on my uh, liquid patina starting at the top and just putting a little bit of liquid patina down, placing my paper over it, and then slowly uh, putting the liquid patina down the leg and then following that with the paper to try and avoid as many wrinkles as possible. Once I'm sure the decoupage paper is in place where I want it, I go over each strip with one more coat of the liquid patina. Once that process has been completed on all four legs and they're completely dry, I go in with some 120 grit sandpaper and with kind of a backward sweeping motion, I remove the excess paper from the sides and the bottom of each of the legs. This is a pretty easy way to make a nice smooth edge all the way around uh, without cutting the fabric or tearing it uh, off the leg itself. Once that was done, I really was having a hard time with the stark white on top. My original thought was that I was going to use decoupage paper on the top as well, and that's why I painted the whole piece white. But when I put it on there, I realized I really didn't like all of the decoupage paper. So instead, I decided to go with some stamps on the top. For this process, I decided to use my brand new stamp set called Birds and Bees by IOD. And if you noticed earlier, I uh, sanded these a little bit with some 220 grit sandpaper. And that's recommended just to kind of open up the pores of the stamps a little bit and let them really receive the ink and uh, be able to transfer that to your piece well. So it's just recommended a really light sanding anytime you get brand new stamps. So here I am, I picked out three birds. I am inking those up with some stays on ink and then placing them down, patting them uh, to get that ink to apply to my piece and then slowly removing them. Once they were down, I still really wasn't crazy about all the white and the black. So I decided to take some uh, apothecary paint and water it down to almost a, a watercolor consistency and paint in those birds using just a little artist brush. I really like the effect of this and this is definitely something I will do in the future, uh, painting in a stamp like this. I thought it was really kind of pretty. Once that's done, I went over it with a nice coat of DIY's clear wax. However, I still wasn't super crazy about all the white, so I did apply one coat of dark wax over that. And then it was done. Project four is this cute little wooden treasure box that I had found on one of my recent hauls. The first thing I had done was actually uh, sand those painted flowers before I started painting myself just to make sure that none of them were raised up out of my paint when I was finished. Once I had that done, I went over it with two even coats of faded burlap by DIY and then gave it a little sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. I wanted it somewhat distracted but not overly so that's kind of what I'm doing there then I wiped it all clean with a damp shop rag and cleaned up the bottom really well and the sides I didn't want to remove the inside uh, linen that was in there so I just cleaned it up as best I could and that's a nice thing about DIY paint is before it's sealed it's pretty easy to wash off with water 
Once that was done, I sealed it up with a coat of DIY's Big Top, and then I was ready to finish it. So I'm starting off with this beautiful new transfer set called Malotte's Pages that was introduced in the IOD spring release. So I cut out some of the little vegetables to put on the top here. I took off the backing, placed them where I wanted them, and then began rubbing them in with the transfer stick. Now, for some reason, I did have a little bit of an issue, even though my uh, big top had had three days to dry. I think it's just because the finish on the base of this was so shiny that even the little bit of stick on the transfer sheets wanted to kind of pull up the paint. So I just had to be really careful and go over it several times and very, very carefully pull that plastic up as I went. For the next step, I decided to stamp on the word seeds. So I grabbed a little stamp set that I had gotten from Amazon and spelled out the letter seeds or the word seeds and then uh, stamped that on the front. I followed that by giving it just a little bit of distressing on the top and over the words and sealed it up with some big top. Project five, I picked up this little wood box for a dollar at the estate sale down the road. And when I got it home, I realized that it had a pretty significant crack on the bottom. Uh, so in order to save it, I mixed up some Durham water putty with water and I am filling that crack with the putty. Uh, and once that's dry, I'm going to go in with some sandpaper and just sand it really smooth. And by the time I was done, you couldn't even tell that that crack was there in the first place. Once this is done, I did take it over to my sink and just kind of bang out all that extra powder and then just gave it a really light wipe with a paper towel to get it clean and ready for paint. So I decided to go with Farm Fresh on this piece and I did two good even coats on the outside and then I wanted to do kind of a contrasting color inside so I went with DIY's crinoline. Once the two coats of paint were applied and dry I went back in with some 220 grit sandpaper gave it a really light sand just to distress the edges a little bit and to smooth out any of the paint. Once that was done, I went ahead and sealed the piece with some uh, Big Top by DIY, and then it was ready to decorate. So for this piece, I thought it would be kind of fun to make it so that it was good for either a girl or a boy, because I do have some moms who bring their kids in once in a while, and I thought this would be kind of fun to put little fish on the outside of this box. So I grabbed my uh, transfer set from IOD called Malotte's Pages and took out some of the fish and began to apply them. This is a pretty easy process. You just take the backing off of the transfer, lay the transfer on your piece where you want it, rub it with the transfer stick and slowly peel back that vellum sheet. Once you're done and you've got your transfer all laid down nicely, take either your hand, your finger or that vellum sheet and rub over the image to burnish it back into the paint and make sure all the pieces are nicely secured. Once that is done, you do need to seal your transfer. And for this, I just used some big top and it was done. My sixth and final project for this week is this little music box. Uh, this one took me a little bit of time, but the first step was removing the embroidered cats from the front of it. And then I did give it two good even coats of a really pretty yellow by DIY that I love called cake batter. 
So here I am just going in with that first coat of paint, just making sure to give it a good even coat all over. And then once that was dry, I went in with a second coat. Once both coats of paint were all nice and dry, I went in with some 220 grit sandpaper and just smoothed the paint really well, went around the edges, did a little bit of distressing, cleaned up where the paint had come up and over the edges a little bit, and just got it all ready to be sealed. Uh, I didn't paint the inside of this box because it's cedar and I didn't want to uh, block the smell because it smells delicious. Once that was done, I took a damp shop towel, cleaned everything up really well, did a little bit more distressing, and then it was ready to seal. So I took my Big Top by DIY, gave it one good even coat all over, and then this part of the project is done and ready to set aside. And now on to the fun part of this project. So I had already decided I was going to incorporate some of my dried flowers and some of the molds that I had just recently purchased from the new IOD spring release. So I'm using uh, the IOD molds called Dewdrop Pond and Toadstool. And uh, the snail comes out of Dewdrop Pond. And then these two mushrooms are coming out of the molds called Toadstool. And I'm using my air dry clay by IOD, pressing that down into the mold, smoothing it out, wiping away any excess around the edges, and then simply flipping them over and letting gravity kind of push them out as I roll the mold back. I wanted to set these aside while I moved on to other things. So they were a little bit uh, cured before I went ahead and painted them. So next I took the piece of foam board that I had taken out of the uh, box and used it as a template to make two circles in some fabric, cut those out and then adhere them to each side of the foam board. And then this is gonna be the backing for my project. As the backdrop for the toadstool and the snail, I decided I wanted to use some of my dried flowers. So I pulled out some lavender and some yarrow, uh, put them where I thought I would want them, kind of used the toadstools as a guide, and then glued each piece down very carefully to the fabric on the circle. Once I got them all placed, I went back over each piece with a little bit more glue just to make sure they were really well protected and very well adhered to the fabric. Next, it's time to start painting my toadstools and I am using Marquee by DIY with Layered Chocolate by DIY, mixing it just to make more of a brick red color and I'm painting the top of the toadstools with that. Once I got the initial uh, coat on, I did go over a little bit with the marquee just in the middle and then a little bit more layered chocolate around the edges to give each of the tops of the toadstool just a tad more uh, dimension. Once the tops were painted, I went in with some DIYs crinoline and painted the bases. And then I did paint this snail and for some reason I forgot to record that, uh, but I used uh, summer crush and cake batter with a little bit of layered chocolate for dimension on the snail. Then it is time to start gluing down my mold pieces. And I started with the large uh, mushroom kind of in the center. I'm using tight bond to glue these down and I'm just carefully placing each piece where I want it and then tapping it down so that it has good uh, contact with the material below. Once that was done, I went in with one of the cute little bee stamps from the Birds and Bees stamp set that I just purchased and put that kind of in with the flowers just to add a little bit of uh, more dimension. Then it's back to uh, some, doing some polka dots on these mushrooms with some uh, DIY white swan and then they are finally done painted and ready for sealing. And I'm just going in with some Big Top by DIY for this last little step and giving them a good coat to protect them. Once the Big Top was completely dry and everything was cured a little bit, I was ready to reattach this piece to the box. 
So I used my hot glue gun and just ran a really good bead of glue all around where uh, that little round circle was going to be going and decided instead of flipping it upside down, I would bring the lid down to it uh, and then position it so I could see what I was doing and then just kind of hold it in place and push it down into that glue to make sure it's got a good seal. Once that was done, I decided to go in with a little bit of moss just to finish this piece and give it a little bit more dimension. So I started with some tight bond, ended up switching over to my glue gun, added some moss to the base of these mushrooms, and I can't tell you how absolutely pleased I am with this piece. I think it is so cute. today's video. I hope you liked it. I know I enjoyed making it for you. I would love to know which of the projects your favorite one was. So please comment below and let me know. Uh, and remember, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you back here on Friday with my thrift haul. Uh, until then, have a great week. Bye.